My name is Brooke Lagana. I'm 23 years old and I'm a filmmaker. The majority of us are openly afraid of cancer, whether it's being diagnosed ourselves or having a loved one fall sick. The average person knows that cancer affects many, many people each year. In these modern times, it's so quick and easy, now more than ever, to save a life. to this number um, to inquire about registering uh, my sister and I for um, bone marrow donations. Hi, I'm Les Getty. I'm 55 years of age. I'm down in Brisbane here at the Wesley Hospital getting treatment for my leukaemia. I, I was born and grew up in a town that, uh, called Innisfail, which is 100 kilometres south of, of Cairns. I've been there and lived there all my life. And I've worked in sugar mills all my life as a boiler maker. I enjoy a bit of fishing, actually quite a lot of fishing actually. And I've got two beautiful children, Kim, my daughter, she's uh, 27, and my son Ryan's 25, my beautiful wife Lindell. I was diagnosed with leukaemia probably, I'll tell you the story from the start. I got, I got crook in the guts, in my uh, guts probably about, when I was about 40. As time went on, it eventually turned into a leukaemia about two, I'd say you know, nearly two years ago now. They, they diagnose as, as chronic myelomonocytic leukaemia, which affects mainly the white blood cells. He said, to fix you up, Les, the only way you got to fix you up, you'll have to have a bone marrow transplant when, it, when the time comes. I said, but considering I've recorded a bit earlier, he said, well, it doesn't work like that. He said, you got to sort of go through the whole process till it gets really bad, and that's when we treat you, because there's no difference between getting treated early or later with my condition. <laughs> So my name is Glenn Kennedy. I'm the Deputy Director of the Department of Haematology and Bone Marrow Transplantation at the Royal Brisbane and Women's Hospital. Bone marrow contains stem cells which develop into the various blood cells in our body, the red cells, the white cells and the platelets. Stem cells are found in the bone marrow and also can circulate in the blood and in babies in umbilical cord blood. Nowadays, we largely use stem cells which are in the blood for bone marrow or stem cell transplantation. For some people who have underlying blood or immune system cancers, such as leukaemia and lymphomas, a bone marrow or stem cell transplant is a treatment option and indeed is often the best chance of cure for those patients. donate blood because I've got a big heart and do like helping people and a few years ago I was in hospital getting a you know, reasonably serious operation and while you're on your back you know getting surgery and that you, you, you feel a bit vulnerable and you think is there some way like I could help people out that are in my situation and so we started giving blood. Well, no one else has passed out so I have pretty good veins. <laughs> One in three Australians will need blood at some point in their lives, and yet just one in 30 people donate blood. We need more than 27,000 donations every week in Australia just to meet the needs of patients in the community. Blood is used by people with cancer, people undergoing surgery, uh, burns victims, and many more people. So we're always looking for regular donors to um, support us and for new donors to roll up their sleeves and give blood. Um, I'm 23 years old. Um, I'm here just um, because I actually had a friend that passed away that used to always try and convince me to come and donate blood, and like I was always like kind of afraid of needles and that sort of thing. And, I got to the point where I kind of realised that it's a good thing and like after she passed away, like I kept, kept felt like 
something that I could do to help other people. And I've only just started. Um, this is my fourth time going now. I'm um, actually waiting to find out whether I can donate platelets today um, for the first time, which I'm pretty excited about. So, yeah, I've done um, two whole bloods and a plasma so far. I like to be able to do something to give to the community and I don't have the financial assets to do it with money so I do some volunteer work, I donate blood, um, my, yeah, my bit. I don't find it painful at all. Um, there's a little quick if you like when the needle's going in. Other than that, I sit back and relax. I always bring a book with me. It's, it's a time to sit back and enjoy. We created a Facebook page and the first day we started it we received two to three likes per minute and it was just overwhelming. People weren't only hitting the like button but they were writing in and already asking questions on how they could help. Fast forward a few weeks and our page was plastered with people who were sending in photos from the Red Cross who were joining as first donors and filling out their bone marrow registry forms. Some were old friends, some I hadn't seen or spoken to in years, but most were complete strangers. It was really inspiring that so many people got on board, wanted to get involved and wanted to spread the word about this. We sold wristbands for awareness that say, will you marry me? And to date we've sold over 600 across Australia. The goal of this was to have the words bone marrow on everybody's minds and spark a dialogue about it between more people. The process really is so quick and easy and more people need to know that. The Cairns Post published a front page article on the project and that was incredibly helpful for us. That was a huge, huge help. What was truly amazing is a young guy, Ben Spina, who wrote in to us and told us that his football team up in Cairns were actually booked in to make a group donation and were all wanting to sign up to the Bone Marrow Registry. This was a key component for the project and a key thing to film, so we booked flights pretty much immediately. A football club's just like any other community or like a family even, and I think in Australia so many of us are touched by cancer in, uh, in one way, whether it's someone we know directly or whether it's a friend of ours um, and someone they know. And In our case it's a, a teammate uh, whose family's been touched by cancer and today we've been able to come down to help raise awareness but importantly actually get a few guys to sign up to the registry and, and hopefully make a difference for someone suffering cancer. I think it's important that young men appreciate that becoming part of the bone marrow registry is really easy. It doesn't take a lot of time. There's no pain. It's an easy process, but frankly, you feel really good about it as well. I couldn't encourage people more strongly to, to get involved. I'm here today talk, talk mainly about getting a donor. After my first interview, we saw all up in the air about we didn't wasn't quite sure if we could get a donor or what. It was like taking two, two steps forward and one back. At the end of January, there was nobody who was a match for me, so it didn't look too good. But by the end of February, they, Dr. Darn was very confident they had somebody on the radar for me. So then he could go ahead with the rest of my chemo and that. I had five rounds of chemo already up till end of January and it sort of didn't look, look too promising because we didn't have a donor but by the end of February we found a donor and he was very confident it was going to be a match. Like the doctors say there's, there's, no, there's, there's no statistics to say how long the donor transplant is going to last or what, it's just, but for me and a lot of other patients the only, the only transplant was the only way you're going to survive or get more, more out of life. There is a 1 in 4 chance, or 25% chance, that somebody's brother or sister will be a matched stem cell donor to them. If somebody does not have a matched sibling donor, then the next step is to look for a matched unrelated donor. The first step here is to look on our national registry, and there is an Australian bone marrow donor registry, which we screen for, for patients within Australia who need 
an unrelated donor for stem cell transplantation. If there is no donor identified on the Australian registry, then we also screen the international registries. Oh wow, I'll take a photo of you as well. Hi, I'm Cora and I'm 18 years old. Hi, I'm Cora, I'm 12. When I was seven years old, I found out that my brother was diagnosed with leukemia and that he was in possible need of a bone marrow transplant. The doctors told me that me being a young male and in the same bloodline as Kyle, that it most likely come back as a positive match. I was so scared at the time, not knowing of what would happen and where I'd go from there and how everything would happen. Now I look back now that I'm 18 years old and realise how easy and how simple it could have been and how simple it actually is to save someone's life. Not only me, but anyone can do it and anyone can save anyone's life. Nowadays, we generally collect the stem cells from the blood. So the first step that the donor undertakes is to actually push the stem cells from their bone marrow out into the blood. We use an injection, a hormone injection under their skin to make this happen. After four days of injections, there's usually enough stem cells pushed into the bloodstream to be able to collect them. At this time, the donor then undertakes a procedure we call apheresis, which is essentially where we suck their blood out from a vein and we put it in a machine where the blood gets spun round and round and round at a very high rate, very fast rate. We take the stem cells off, the stem cell layer off, and collect them and store in the lab. And then the rest of the blood we put back into the patient um, uh, through another drip. Then the donor's stem cells are infused through a vein, just like in a, having a blood transfusion. Um, and then the patient takes around about two weeks or so um, to engraft their stem cells start making more bone marrow um, and then hopefully you know, get out of hospital. Brad Fenn and Aiden. Mm -hmm. I got in here on Saturday and I've got A plus to give me a cup. When did you find that out? About a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did a bone marrow transplant over Christmas and that didn't work. Mm -hmm. So then what happens then? Um, I'm getting at cam. And then my brother's stem cells. Oh, so you would never expect it. So yeah, yeah, okay. it like was he tested after you got your first transplant? Um, no. It was after a while. He used to just come in for get, to get back with blood. Okay. Do you know how many back of blood you had? Like yeah. yeah. I used to get them three times a week, but now I'm only going to two mm -hmm. when I'm out. So that's a bit better. Mm -hmm. Robert Schultz. Uh, just turned 67 and I'm from Coffs Harbour and I still work and I'm pretty fit and I think that's probably what's helped me. And the first chemo was very uh, bad for me and I ended up with most of the symptoms you, that they say you can get from. But the following two were really good. I, I just went through them really well. And the same with so far with this, which is I'm now into the bone marrow side of things where I get them. They're on their way from overseas at the moment, so. So we're about to talk to Cheryl and she is a cancer survivor. She got her bone marrow transplant just over a decade ago. She's going to tell us a little bit about her cancer journey, but more so the importance of what it means to have more people on the bone marrow donor registry. Hi, my name is Cheryl. I'm 59 years of age. I live on the Gold Coast and I'm a bone marrow transplant survivor. I had a very rare uh, form of bone marrow uh, disease called polycythemia rubrovira, or PRV for short. It was quite a defining time in my life and I had to face many of my own fears in giving blood for one, one of my fears, and also coming to terms with the fact that I had a long-term disease that would probably or possibly lead to a bone marrow transplant somewhere down the track. They started off testing my brothers and sisters and my family. None of them were a match. 
and so they had to go worldwide to, to the bone marrow registry to see whether or not they could find their donor. One of the things that I didn't realise was the lack of information that there is out there in the general public regarding becoming a bone marrow donor. That was blatantly obvious with friends and family and even my own children had no idea what was involved in becoming a donor. I had people tell me that when they died they could take as much marrow as they wanted, not realising that you have to be alive. I had people say that they didn't want to have to go through having a very large needle put into their hips and uh, sucking it out that way. I think things have come a long way and, and I think there needs to be a little bit more um, information out there about what is involved with, with donations of stem cells. I think also that you're dealing with people's fears. You're dealing with their fears of needles, with fear of giving such a large amount of blood and thinking that uh, that's going to be detrimental to them. And it's not, I guess, until you've had as many bags of blood taken from you as I have and also been given as many bags as I have during the transplant uh, period, which I would think would be the blood products in total would be in excess of 50, that you realise that, that more information needs to be out there. And so if anybody else out there is considering facing fears of needles and their fears of giving blood, I, I urge you to please think of people like me who wouldn't be part of my children's lives, my grandchildren's lives, my partner's lives, um, if it wasn't for my donor. It is probably, I would think, one of the most selfless things that I think a person could do. And I can only assume that a donor would feel that this was um, a, a major thing that they could do for someone else. So we're going to talk to a girl called Karina who's reached out to us on Facebook and she'd like to share her story about what she went through to donate her stem cells to her brother. Like it's a long story, but <laughs> it's good though. Okay, I'll start from that. So I first donated blood when I was 16 years old. I thought it'd be a great and easy thing to do because I had something so valuable that could help other people. I first donated stem cells when I was 20 years old. My brother was diagnosed with um, leukemia when he was 26 years old. He was relapsing and they said we're going to have to try the next line of treatment which would be a stem cell transplant. I remember in that moment praying straight away to God. I'm like, if he needs a match, then correct my blood right now, God, um, because I want to be that for him. It came back against the odds that I was a match and we were so happy with that news. We couldn't believe it because it's, it's something that we'd hoped for, but you just never know because you can't predict these things. I had to have needles for a week every day, which was just really quick needle, um, just which stimulated stem cells being produced from my marrow. I was hooked up to a machine for about six hours and they harvested stem cells. So the process is I, was, I had this line put into my neck and that they, they hooked that up to a machine and Basically the machine filtered my blood, so it took my blood, went through this machine, filtered the stem cells out and then returned the blood back to me. And so that process took about six hours and then that was done and they got about three bags of stem cells. The surgeon said to my brother, he's like, you should buy your, your sister a beer, like she really, she went through a lot for you. There's, I guess there's no, no risk that would really outweigh the benefits of what I was able to do. I would never not do it. There would just be no doubt in my mind if I could help someone. And I think that's the thing, like if you can help someone live a bit longer, why wouldn't you want to do that? We shouldn't have to wait until ourselves or a loved one is battling cancer. This is something that we should be educated on and acting on from a young age. So this is a call to anyone and everyone across Australia and all over the world. If you're healthy, I urge you to join the Red Cross and please become a bone marrow donor.
all it is is a blood test so that they can have their immune, immune genes tested um, to be put onto the registry. That's all it takes. And they may go through their lives and never be asked to do anything more than that. But if they are the only match donor out there for somebody, then that can really make a difference. Giving blood only takes about an hour of your time and each blood donation saves three lives. Not everyone's able to give blood, so to have the opportunity to be able to do that is such a beautiful thing, to give blood and potentially save someone's life. So for two seconds of a little sting, it's totally worth it. To encourage young people like kids in school to get into donating blood, I would um, start off by saying like it's not as painful as you think it is. The feeling that I get once I walk out of here knowing that I've donated blood and done something to like help another person is a really good feeling. The whole idea of it too, too is, is trying to get more Australians on the, on the donor, donor list, which is, doesn't involve much really. All you do is go out for a blood test, blood test and you're on the, on the, on the donor list, so which, you know, probably rarely, probably one in a million chance that you get called up. And it's not a big deal either, it's just got, they just take, uh, give you a couple of needles and um, your bone marrow makes an oversupply and spills in your bloodstream and they extract, and they extract it from there. And there's your product for the person who's going to get the bone marrow transplant. My transplant donor is probably one of the most special people in my life and always will be from here on in. He saved my life and without him I would not be here today. The most amazing thing about it is that we all have this valuable gift and we, can, we have the ability to help save someone's life and I don't think anyone should hesitate to do that. So don't hesitate at all, it's painless. Compared to the people who can benefit from what you can give, it, doesn't, it pales in comparison. I had probably in excess of 50 bags of blood, blood products and to those people who are currently donating blood, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And to people thinking about it, please, it is one of the most selfless things that I think that you could do. If I could do it, I would. What it all boils down to, the more people on that donor list, the better chance. And there's a lot of people who, who, can't, who can't get a donor because, because they can't find anybody on the donor list. So, you know, the more people on the donor list, it's a big help for the people who've got leukaemia. My name's Tom Hancock. I'm 21 years old. Hi, my name's Ben Spina. I'm 25 years old. Hey, my name's Maddie. I'm 20. My name's Sheldon Power Hobbs. I'm 22 years old. My name is Bronte. I'm 23 years old. Hi, my name's Jill. I'm 36 years old. My name is Sally. I'm 23 years old. My name is Karina Sitchbat. I'm 25 years old. And I've just joined the. And I joined the. And I joined the Bone Marrow Registry. And I joined the Bone Marrow Registry. The Bone Marrow Registry. Bone Marrow Registry. And I joined the Bone Marrow Registry. Hi, I'm Corey. I'm 18 years old. And if I can be a bone marrow donor, then so can you. My name's Brock Schaefer, I'm 26 years old and I signed up to the Australian Bone Marrow Registry. My name's Ryan Getty, I'm 24 years old and I signed up to the Bone Marrow Registry. If I can join the bone marrow registry, so you can too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I signed up to the bone marrow. Okay. Is that again? That's a rat. That's a rat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to tell you why. I, Cause you won't be here when we are not dancing. I, I don't have to tell you why. I, I don't have to tell you why.